in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed I want us to take quality time, five, ten minutes, to just thank the Lord for his goodness and his faithfulness. Hallelujah. He says, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Verse 32. He says, Let them exalt him also in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of the elders. I'll give you three scriptures and then we'll tell the Lord thank you. Scripture number two, Lamentations chapter three, from verse 22 to 23. I brought to the stage tonight my contemplations as far as thanksgiving is concerned. It says, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Do you believe that? It says, because his compassions fail not. The next verse, please. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. One last scripture, Psalm 103 from verse 1. We'll read down to 5. Please be patient. Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, he says, and all that is within me, bless his holy name verse 2 bless the lord O my soul and forget not his benefits verse 3 who forgiveth thine iniquities who healed all thy diseases how many not some who healed all thy diseases who redeemed thy life from destruction who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies the last verse who satisfied thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, because of all this and more, he says, oh, that men would praise the Lord. I'm not one person who likes to blow trumpets and to talk. I always like to give God praise. I made a covenant with God years ago, and I prayed and asked him, never to show me the full extent of my impact in the lives of people less pride and vain glory steps into our lives because we're human i just said lord let me just have an idea of what you are doing through my life and that is enough and god answered that prayer but i can tell you ladies and gentlemen it will sound like an exaggerated statement or flattery if we are to take our time in detail and express the goodness, the hand of God from this house to the nations of the earth. Some of you will not believe it in as much as you know or you have an idea of what God is doing. Hallelujah. It is the mighty and marvelous hand of God. Salvations, healings, deliverances, restorations, supernatural turnarounds time will fail me to, to talk about nations we're not just talking of individuals now we're not just talking of churches now we're not just talking of maybe regions we're talking of nations that have experienced the power of god on account of this hallelujah and i want us to start tonight by truly acknowledging the Lord is a big secret I've learned from the fathers of faith and I've incorporated it as a secret in my life to always be thankful always be thankful no assumptions when it has to do with your work with God and you do not have to wait until miracles and the demonstrations of his power are seemingly spectacular 
everything by the hand of God deserves your acknowledgement in gratitude whilst you're seated I don't know how you are going to tell him thank you but I want you to think about your life for one moment and think about the mighty hand of God in this ministry go ahead and tell him thank you father we thank you father we thank you I can never repay you but from my heart I like to say that I thank you go ahead and bless him I can never repay you but from my heart I like you to know that I thank I can never repay you, but from my heart, I'm saying, Lord, that I thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for the grace that you have given. From my heart, I like to say that I thank you. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord with my mouth. Will I make it known from the rising of the sun? Right on till it's going down, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. Go ahead and bless him. Father, thank you. Thank you for healings. Thank you for deliverances. Thank you for preservation. Is someone expressing gratitude tonight? Thank him for koinonia. Thank him for light, marvelous light. Thank him for the power of his spirit. The grace to travel across the nations, bringing the light, the truth of God's word with power and grace and a spectacular demonstration of his spirit. Is someone saying thank you? Thank him for prosperity. Thank him for increase. Thank him for influence. Thank him for Jesus consistently revealed in our midst, consistently glorified in our midst. Lord, we bless you. Let the nations know that you are God. Let the nations know that you are King. Let the nations acknowledge you as the doer of every good thing every good thing every healing every miracle don't be tired this is part of the miracle service father we thank you father we thank you father we thank you i am so blessed my soul has found rest, oh Lord, I give you thanks. I am so blessed, my soul has found rest, oh Lord, I give you thanks. Father, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. We bless you. Don't focus on me. Don't focus on what is happening. Just look to Jesus. We honor you and we thank you. Thank him for your children. Thank him for your wife. Thank him for your husband. Forget about what is not yet in place. Just focus on thanksgiving. Thank him because it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. The psalmist said, I lay me down and I slept 
I wait for the Lord sustained me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Father, we thank you. Let the nations watch as we thank you. Let the nations watch as we helplessly declare our dependence on you who is the doer of everything good in this life and in this ministry. Thank you. For in Jesus' name we pray. Father, as a man greatly helped by you, as a ministry that you have lavishly shown your mercy, we say thank you. Thank you for life. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the power of wisdom. Thank you for the systems of advantage you have granted us access to. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you for placing your hand upon our lives and causing the nations to experience your light even from us. Thank you for granting us access to illumination. Tonight we have come with our hearts open. Tonight we have come ready to receive. Lord Jesus, let no one walk out of this place disappointed. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated. I truly believe with all my heart. By the way, I like us to truly appreciate those who are in the overflow outside. Please celebrate those outside. Is this the best you can do for them? Hallelujah. I don't know how many capacity seater we're going to build, but God is granting us grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. It, it pains my heart sometimes when I find out, you know, when, when we have to just walk with the provisions that we have for now, those who are in the auditorium represent a very minute fraction of those so many in all the overflows down to the basement, outside, several people, tens of thousands of people. This can only be God. This is but the hand of God. Praise the Lord. Tonight, there are three areas that the Lord revealed to me in the place of prayer that he's going to be dealing with very seriously. And I want to charge our hearts and then we get straight to the business of the night. Um, number one, please write it down. The first area that the Lord wants to visit by his spirit, and this coincides with the program of God for the nations, even in this end time. I did tell us that the Spirit of God revealed to me, and this is also consistent with Scripture, that before Jesus returns, as we approach the end of the age, there will be a restoration of the mantles, the healing ministry, in a way and a dimension we have never seen. I know that here and there we have seen pockets of healing, and while it will be very uncomfortable, especially for we men of God to acknowledge that we're still at the level of infancy, as far as it has to do with the healing ministry, it is true. You just need to be a student of scripture and a student of history, and you will come to a very honest conclusion that in as much as God is helping us here and there, we do not come close to the phenomenal demonstrations of the hand of God, especially in the, in the area of healing that have been has been experienced you know in the ages and the years past but we know that God is restoring this grace in the name of Jesus Christ 
So tonight, the Lord is going to be moving as a healer and as a deliverer. This is the first area that God wants to deal with. Why am I telling you? So that your faith would be alive and so that you will find comfort knowing that he has not called the seed of Jacob to seek him in vain. Let me give you a few scriptures. Psalm 34, please, from verse 18 and 19. Let's work together, media. We have a number of scriptures to deal with. The Bible says, The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. 19. It says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Many. In as much as that person is a righteous person, the Bible says it is not unusual for the righteous to be afflicted, but it leaves him with an assurance that the Lord delivered him out of them all. Shout amen. amen. The Lord delivered him out of them all. Number two, Psalm 107. We read it earlier, but we'll read it again. 19 and 20 psalm 107 19 and 20 it says then they cried unto the lord in their trouble and he saved them out of their distresses verse 20 it says he sent his word and it healed them and delivered them from their destructions so the word of god sustains within itself the capacity to heal and the capacity to to deliver from destruction in Isaiah chapter 53 very popular scripture and verse 5 Isaiah 53 and verse 5 the Bible says but he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities it says the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed Apostle Peter in expressing this scripture would say by his stripes we were healed that means no matter what the situation is tonight as you are hearing this scripture i'm not just rehearsing a scripture you already read it is a prophetic word to you that you must be uncomfortable with that situation and trust god to step in over your life in the name of jesus christ Amen. hallelujah in isaiah 49 i like this one from verse 24 down to 26 shall the prey be taken from the mighty oh let every devil hear this or the lawful captive delivered is a question 25 it says but thus saith the lord even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered it says for i will contend who contends with them god himself Listen, hold on, don't rush that scripture. Do you know what it means for God to arise and contend with them that contend with you, not with him? Not with him. I will arise and contend with him. Ah. Who can stand against the Lord? No one can. No one will. Can stand against our king. No one can. No one will. He said, Arise, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered. For I will contend with him that contended with thee, and I will save your children. Verse 26. It says, I will feed them that oppress you with their own flesh and they shall be drunken with their own blood as with sweet wine and all the flesh shall know listen carefully that i am thy savior and thy redeemer the mighty one of jacob shout a loud amen, amen. so god is here tonight to heal and to deliver to heal and to deliver to take away pain to take away bodily afflictions that plague God's people, spying upon your liberty. I have explained to you the theology behind healing, that God heals to reveal, number one, his love, and then number two, his power. But classically speaking, the reason why the healing ministry is very important is because every believer only has the right to one body per lifetime, as much as the Bible reveals to us. Please pay attention one body per lifetime 
your spirit is only authorized to be hosted in one body within the frame of a lifetime hallelujah that means whatever deteriorates that body is attempting to cut short your life and your days are we together there is a requisite level a threshold level of health that your body must attain unto for your spirit to be able to live inside it comfortably when your body is deteriorated beyond that point your spirit will have to be separated whether it is the end of your days or not so every manifestation of sickness disease and infirmity is is a is the administration of death in portions hallelujah and then deliverance why do we need to be delivered i told you that we're not only delivered from spirit influences we are also delivered from conditions are we together now yes there are spirits that tie into conditions and oppress God's people you can be delivered from spirit influences but you can be delivered from conditions the word deliver or deliverance simply means you're being separated from an influence be it spiritual or a circumstantial influence that impedes your advancement and impedes the revelation of the glory of God in and through your life number two the second area God is going to be dealing with extensively and please I like your heart to be open to receive everything tonight is the area of our finances Isaiah 35 and verse 27 believe it all in the name of Jesus Christ 35 27 Isaiah help us media 35 27 3 5 2 7 did I get that right let them shout for joy that favor my righteous cause yeah let them say continually let me quote it because of time the Lord be magnified which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servant are we together God hath pleasure listen carefully in the prosperity of his servant that means everything that fights your getting blessed is fighting the will of God concerning your life believers please hear me settle it once and for all that it is not antichrist to prosper settle it once and for all that in the face of financial limitations many things will not be in place in your life period whether as an individual whether organizationally speaking are we together this is a world that is driven by economy it takes more than the awareness of the will of God to birth his purposes there is a place in your life where you will need sufficient resources not just resources resources to the degree to which your well-being and the assignment of God needs the Bible says God delighted in the prosperity of his servant Deuteronomy 8 18 says and thou shalt remember but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God it says it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth it is God that empowers men to get wealth to establish his covenant which he swear with your fathers particularly Abraham what was the covenant in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed he made a covenant to Abraham hallelujah and the Bible says that in Galatians 3, I believe, verse, verse 29 or so, it says, And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So in Christ, all of us have become beneficiaries, recipients of that blessing. It was to Abraham and his seed, Paul teaches us, which is Christ. And now because we have been grafted into Christ through redemption, we are partakers of all that is in Christ, including the blessing of Abraham. Hallelujah. So God gives power to prosper. That means it takes power to prosper. It takes power to prosper in this wicked, evil, and selfish world. It takes power more than value. 
it takes power to prosper the bible says strong men retain wealth the easiest part of wealth is becoming wealthy staying wealthy takes power it takes more than value is someone learning psalm 127 from verse 1 and 2 psalm 127 from verse 1 and 2 except the lord builds a house he says they labor in vain that build it that means it will carry a semblance of being built but the bible says it is in vain except the lord keeps or watches over a city he said the watchman waketh up but in vain verse 2 it says it is vain for you to rise up early that is not a that is not a bad virtue but it is in vain if god does not support you and to sit up late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow for it is only god that can give his beloved sleep hallelujah we live in a world where people downplay the role that god has to play as far as empowering people is concerned let me tell you economically speaking you don't need to be a christian you don't need to know god you do not even need to acknowledge him once you understand the principles of value and productivity principles of exchange and relationships these are foundational principles from a secular standpoint that govern the availability of financial resources you don't have to be born again but i can tell you there are dimensions because becoming wealthy comes with other luggages too hatred wickedness jealousy battles you have no business fighting are we together now that one now it is not brain work that preserves you he said i lay me down and i slept i waked for the lord sustained me hallelujah if you were alive in the days of noah whether you were an economic guru whether you understood principles of finances whoever was not in the ark no matter how economically stable you were no matter how valuable your business or your products and services were you would die completely and let me tell you according to the laws of times and seasons there are always moments on earth where this kind of event reoccurs where only those who know how to hide under the shelter of jehovah are preserved an example was covid 19. hallelujah by the privilege of God's grace, I've had the honor of praying with, talking with, and ministering at a very personal level to multi-millionaires and billionaires. And I can tell you, you will think that attaining a level of wealth of that sort will translate automatically to peace and joy and rest. It is a joke. You do not want to know the problems. There are many multi-millionaires in dollars who will give up their money to find peace, will give up their money to find joy, will give up their money to deal with that which is plaguing their health. It is the blessing of the Lord that maketh rich and added no sorrow. Medical doctors here present and across the world will tell you that most of their clients are not poor people. How much do they have to visit the hospital regularly? The kind of wealth that the more your wealth grows, the more your BP2 grows. The more your wealth grows, the more you are, you're suspecting everybody, including your wife and your husband. You become a millionaire, you transfer yourself to one room alone. You become a billionaire, you move to one house alone. What kind of life is that? So when God wants to prosper us, don't carry brain work and economy and say, leave all that Christian talk. The person talking to you is not stupid. I understand economic principles. He says, I, Daniel, understood by books. But I can tell you there is a way, there is a superior dimension to accessing the blessings of God and find rest. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory sit down hallelujah you can have money and believe that is all it takes and one thing can happen to your business and reduce you break your pride like it has happened to many people who have laughed at God 
find out what happened to remember the story of the rich man in the Bible he destroyed barns and built bigger ones and said my soul find rest listen believers let me tell you this you will never hear me downplay the place of the blessings of God the place of wealth and abundance I'm not that kind of preacher I will teach you the whole counsel of God make no mistakes about the importance and the relevance of finances in the upkeep of your life your children I understand the price of things have have for some doubled some tripled hallelujah one of my people was giving me a haircut this afternoon and he was just giving me a story of the market what goes on there and he said this and that that used to be this is now this and we're yet to step into December you know what happens already hallelujah we need to pray because it looks like the price of chicken now will soon almost become house rent. <laughs> Are we together? Praise the name of the Lord. So don't, don't bring some kind of false humility and say, I don't need to prosper, I'm not interested. It is wickedness to reject prosperity because there are many people connected to you when you think from a standpoint of selfishness you don't need much to be alive and all of that how much this is all your stomach this is all of you how much do you need to eat but when you think about those connected to you and then the program of God you've heard me say the name of Jesus is heavy it takes resources to lift it up high enough for the nations to see Koinonia, hear me tonight. God has sent me tonight to speak and declare that grace for prosperity. It must land on you tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. It must land on you tonight. I believe in prosperity. I believe it is the will of God's people. Listen, I do not believe. Listen, please. I do not believe that God's people have to live a life from hand to mouth, struggling around. Most of the attitudes and temptations of unrighteousness come in response to lack. Is that true? There are more people who are delving the path of compromise and unrighteousness as a result of lack than it is as a result of abundance. very simple health situations that can be managed medically are complicated because of lack of financial resources look at the amount of young people right now having bp and all kinds of things you see a young boy in his early 20s having the trouble of a man of 60 years what are you thinking about and he says my father died i'm the firstborn among seven and six of them are idol worshippers i'm the only one who got born again You will prosper in the name of Jesus Christ. Allah is turning things around. Allah is turning things around. Allah is turning things around. Sing it one more time. As a prophetic word that God will prosper you. There is wealth that comes by developing your value and exchanging it for a price. That is the standard classic way to be blessed financially. That means you package your value, you serve it with excellence to a targeted consumer base. That's what you call business. There is a level of wealth that comes by reason of impacting lives. You don't sell that, you give. However, because of God's system of justice, there will always be 
a way that people will honor you and reward you and because you did not sell it your reward will not come at a fixed price it will come based on the perception of the one you have blessed are we together now but there is the third dimension of wealth that the world cannot get it is the prophetic dimension it's called sovereign wealth wealth that comes by the speakings of the prophet it says, and by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt, and by a prophet was he preserved. Believe in the Lord your God, he says, and you shall be established. He said, believe in his prophets. What is the assignment of the prophetic? To create a climate of favor above you. I hope you believe this. There is overemphasis on just the spirituality of wealth and people do not become valuable the bible talks about god blessing the works of your hands but please hear me believers make no mistakes to downplay the place of the prophetic just because you are valuable i have taught you here there are times like peter where your boat is correct yet you will not catch fish you can be in the sea yet you will not catch fish you have the correct net you are a professional fisherman at that point you don't need fishing you need jesus Jesus said, cast your net to the right side. For some of you, you have tried. Your first prayer request right now is your business because it is not working. In as much as the value is there, the prophetic is powerful by this time tomorrow. I hope you believe what I'm saying. I made a covenant with God that I will never raise a people who are just spiritually vibrant men of the word and men of prayer i believe in the power of influence i believe in god prospering people there are many unnecessary prayer requests one of my dear sons will say that financial prosperity will reduce your prayer points and increase your prayer life that means your prayer life will be reduced from give me, give me. And you can now properly pray the way your spirit desires. For most believers, our prayers are surrounded by give me, give me. One time a wealthy man came, very wealthy man came to my house with his children. And I said, everybody should say what is their concern. And the children absolutely didn't have anything to say. I'm not sure they even understood what I was saying. I said, look how unfair life can be. I'm asking these children and they're just looking around and smiling and they said, oh, nothing, maybe just general blessings. I said, oh dear. General blessings. Whereas there are people you say, what should God do? Ah. May God do it this night. I prophesy to you, may God do it this night in the name of jesus christ i hope i'm not wasting your time open up your heart to prosper in this wicked world some of you you need to pay attention when this grace comes tonight because give your parents a chance to see the lifted you before they go to see jesus give your loved ones a chance and then this this dirty life of hustling and going around to compromise on your faith because of tea and bread it's not enough to tell believers stop doing this stop following this and that we must introduce the grace that empowers people hallelujah look at how people run from pillar to post because of house rent by the time the lady is pushed to the wall now, the devil begins to suggest all kinds of things. Then the devil programs a wicked man who says, beautiful lady, are you not in Abuja? Don't you know, are you a small girl? And then she delves into a path of compromise. And when believers come, they do not understand the pain of lack. And it's easy for people to judge. I'm saying it again, may God prosper you. How many, how many sincere men and women of God, some of you are seated here, scattered in the congregation. You love Jesus. There is so much you want to do for the kingdom. You are not limited by revelation. You are not limited by your hunger and passion. Your limitation is resources. And the devil knows the role that resources have to play. 
some of you have never been able to do anything any any prophetic campaign for the kingdom because of resources you pass by children in your community every day some of them they will tell you this person stopped school since january and you pass and you just say oh dear i wish i wish may god change that i wish in the name of jesus <laughs> hallelujah imagine that as i came here now i have a lot of financial needs and then and i can prophesy you think i'll leave you to go free Are we together? Imagine that I, I, I ask them to give me a bowl now. Once I speak to you, just don't even ask me any question. Just drop whatever. I, you know, all these skills that people bring, it's not that people are bad. It's what happens when there is no lack. When, when there is lack. Hallelujah. I submit to you with all humility. What it takes to run one koinonia service is what many people will run a conference with. I submit to you by God. But for as long as I'm alive and for as long as this ministry is, nobody will ever put one pressure on you financially. No. For someone, maybe you came here, husband and wife, maybe you came here, a pastor representing your ministry. Among the many graces you should covet is the help of God, even in this area. Don't just covet the healing, anointing, signs and wonders and leave this other part. Believe me, God can prosper you in a way that every devil knows you have been helped by God. This is not about bragging and making noise. If it is not there, it is not there. It's as simple as that. Hallelujah. So this is the second thing that God is doing. Visiting the finances of God's people. Ending this financial captivity that has held families, held so many people down. Especially because of what is happening across the globe. Right now, frankly speaking, there is no nation you go to that automatically guarantees financial freedom. Europe, there's fight everywhere. America is there. Africa, we have our own. Nigeria, we have our own peculiar issues. So whether you run from pillar to post, it is still the help of God. And Uzziah prospered because he was marvelously helped of God. You're a businessman here. Please open up your heart. And don't let the devil deceive you and say, I am prosperous. How much? You see, that's the problem. For most times, when you are driven by, you, you are not pro-kingdom in your thinking, respectfully speaking, how much is enough? You see, you don't measure enough by your personal satisfaction. You measure enough by how much is required for the kingdom. If God has called you to be a kingdom financier and you just rejoice over one billion or hundred million, that is too small for a work. How much is it to build the house of God? hallelujah you know you are truly prosperous when you can give lavishly to the work of God and it does not affect you until you get there don't rest hallelujah having a car and having an estate and those these things they are wonderful I don't downplay that sacrifice but we're getting to a point where God will give men prosperity that is equal to that of nations where you can sit down in the morning in your office and you are just sharing money like a that's your work in the name of jesus this ministry this is what we are giving this one for this one this mission agency may that be your portion in the name of jesus christ <laughs> hallelujah how many clothes can you buy how many foods can you eat? No matter how greedy you are, two or three plates is enough. 
your body will even say you I can't take more so we're not talking about accumulating money to say my soul find rest no for some of you you are right here and if we are to check your prayer request it's still this economic thing again your children are perhaps now in tertiary institutions and sadly you see some of the things that have happened to our federal institutions I believe in the blessing of the Lord I believe that it is the will of God to show men mercy may you find that grace Amen. number three what is God doing in our lives tonight advancement and establishment this is the third thing that the Lord revealed to me please pay attention Proverbs chapter 4 please from verse 18 and 19 Proverbs 4 18 and 19 but the path of Joshua Selman is as a shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day verse 19 it says but the way of the wicked is as darkness they know not what they at what they stumble so the Bible says for the wicked person his path should get dimmer and dimmer but for the just that his path should be as the shining light that shines brighter and brighter in Job chapter 8 and verse 7 a scripture that has ministered to me it ministered to me right from when God started with me he said though thy beginning was small for someone this is a prophetic word for you tonight though thy beginning was small he said yet thy later end should greatly increase that means there is no problem starting small there is no problem starting whether we small in terms of the level of grace in terms of your understanding of the word in terms of your capacity and influence but according to God's pathway for the believer increase should come with time hallelujah in Job chapter 42 while meditating upon this this morning it blessed me in a, a very profound way Job 42 let's start from verse 12 please Job 42 and verse 12 watch this the Bible says so the Lord blessed the later end of Job more than his beginning go to verse 13 let's see I just wanted you to see that first part it says um, let's 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 try 15 so we do 15 down to 17 it says and in all the land he's talking about the daughters he later had now and their father gave them inheritance among the brethren the later part of Job's life now 16 we we'll read down to 17 after this job lived 140 years and saw his sons and his son's sons even four generations 17 so job died being old and full of days this was the later part there is nobody on earth who has gone through what job went through so by that talk you should already know that your situation is not hopeless if you had seen job in the face of his tragedy what else is worse than losing all your sons and daughters in one day then you are plagued with your health condition you now see the wealthiest man in the east seated by the roadside with his wife can you imagine that and people would pass him and just nod their heads and say your charm has finally caught up with you God punish you and they would pass and the Bible says even for such a man there is hope so what have you gone through that makes you believe that is hopeless? Do you know what it meant for the woman to still be alive and still give birth to daughters and sons? And the Bible says they were fairer and more beautiful than all the people there. Then God restored Job twice. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me. Everything that was lost be returned unto me everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me please sit down advancement and establishment is God's will for my life is God's will for your life Isaiah chapter 12 I believe I hope I got that right and verse 6 Please help me find it it was the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron it was the Lord that advanced 
Moses and Aaron. I remember the day I found that scripture, it blessed me in no small way. That men do not just move forward. When you see a man moving forward, ladies and gentlemen, there is a force in the spirit, the very hand of God. Media, can you find that scripture for me? Yes, thank you. 12, 1 Samuel, my apologies, 1 Samuel 12 and verse 6. It was the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron. So Moses did not just go forward. Aaron did not just go forward. Men do not just go forward. It's the Lord that advances men. In your career, in your life, may you go forward tonight. The Lord brought you here tonight to move you forward. God does not bring people to take them backward. Are you listening to me? God does not bring people, I repeat, to take them backward. He has brought you here to move you forward and I have come as a prophetic midwife. In the name of Jesus, you must go forward. In the name of Jesus, I say again, you must go forward. Hallelujah. One of the characteristics of living things, biology taught us, is movement. That when a person or a thing is alive, you test it by its ability to move. That means when a person is stagnated or stagnating, it is a sign of death. Hallelujah. We're going to start by tonight by praying a few prayer points. Get ready to pray. When it's time to pray, pray seriously in the name of Jesus Christ. Prayer is a very powerful platform that helps us to make our requests known. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6, it says to be anxious for nothing. Other versions will say careful. The correct word there is anxious. Be anxious for nothing, he says, but in everything. How many things? Everything. By prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. He says, present your request. Give us KJV, please. Make your request. Let your request be made known unto God. Let your request be made known. Don't assume he knows. Let your requests be known unto God. Hallelujah. In Mark chapter 11 and verse 24, Mark 11, 24, Jesus was teaching them on prayer and said, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, desire, pray, desire, pray, desire, not just wish, connect your desires to prayer. When ye pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. Hallelujah. Apostle John was teaching us and he says, and this is the confidence we have in him that when we ask anything that is according to his will, we know that he heareth us. This is our confidence that when we come before him asking anything, we know. And that when we know that he hears us, then we can be confident that our petitions have been granted. God himself is a prayer answering God. You believe that? So as we arise to pray, now please pay attention. Um, the issue of advancement and finances, that one would just come by strong prophetic declarations. Every time you lift your hands or every time you say amen, please have it at the back of your mind that amen means let it be done unto me as spoken by the Lord through his servant. That's what amen means. Are we together now? So your, your assignment is to receive and know that prophetically something is coming upon your life. But my, my primary focus tonight is I want to really take out time and pray for the sick and pray for those who have been oppressed. Hallelujah. So you are in this place and you know that you have been plagued by all kinds of demonic assaults, number one, and then you have all kinds of bodily illnesses and pains, you know. I was researching earlier. I wanted to know all the sicknesses that are available within our environment and in the world. I lost count. I mean, you cannot imagine the... the the, the materials I was consulting would bring one, one class of sicknesses and then list variations. For instance, if you say cancer, in the medical world, cancer is not just cancer as you know. We just call it in layman's language. By the time they pieces that thing and start a lecture for you, you will just say, look, let me just... 
cancer, headache. What you call headache is a complicated issue because there's headache that is a symptom of many sicknesses. So it's not, you just generally say headache. But for someone, headache means fatigue, you need to rest. For someone, it's a symptom of something else. Are we together now? There is only one name. There is only one name with power to say. With power to say. I may not know all the variations of the sicknesses, but this one is for sure. There is only one name. Hallelujah. Rise upon your faith. When we are done praying, then I'm going to begin to minister to the sick. And please, all the overflows down to the basement and then the overflow outside. And for those connecting online media, please let them have the numbers to call or the emails or whatever is the means of contact. Make sure that you carry our global family and those who are connecting online along. As soon as we are done praying, I'm going to start ministering by the power of God. Please, i like you to make sure that you do not lose concentration. Hallelujah. Let me request for, um, so that we can conserve time. How many of you already have your prayer requests? Just show by wave of hands. You already have it written down how many of you may need a minute or two to still write a few things let me see your hands okay here's what will happen um ushers and then maybe every other department pr that can help them while we are praying may i request that you bring out your prayer request now pass it to the person by the aisle left or right so that we collate it right away because there's a lot we're going to be doing hallelujah So we're going to pray. I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit and I believe in the ministry of prayer. In the next five minutes, without losing concentration, I want you to begin to pray in the Spirit. Open up your heart by faith. Pray in the Spirit. Pray in understanding. Prepare your heart for the prayer points that are about to come. Is someone praying? Go ahead and pray. Somebody is praying. In the name of Jesus Christ. Isaiah 54 and verse 17. Isaiah 54 and verse 17. This, my people, please, can you worship team? You people have sung, eh? Let, let my people use the mic and let's pray. Maybe four or five mics. You can send it to my dear people so that we'll take some time to pray in this place tonight. Isaiah 54 and verse 17. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. It says, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shall condemn. It says, this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Listen carefully. And their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. We are praying over the issue of supernatural protection and preservation. Are we together now? Luke chapter 10 and verse 19. I'll give you three scriptures, two more now. Luke 10, 19, please. Luke 10, 19. Behold, Koinonia, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. It says, and nothing shall by any means. Someone say by any means. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. 
2 Timothy 4 and verse 18. 2 Timothy 4 and verse 18. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, it says, and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Someone shout, say in the name of Jesus. One more time, say in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that every walk of evil over my life, over my family, and all connected to me, I come against you in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Someone is praying. Someone is praying. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, he said he suffered no man to do them wrong. He reproved kings for their sake, saying, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Say in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I am God's anointed. I am God's anointed. Therefore, I declare, therefore, I declare that every evil, that every evil against my life, against my life. I cause you by the blood of the Lamb. Open your mouth and pray. Every evil. Every evil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every closed door. Every closed door. Over my destiny. Over my destiny. Right now. Right now. I declare. I declare. Be open. Be open. Please open your mouth and pray. Be open. Every closed door. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. He said, I desire to come to you once and again, even I, Paul, but Satan hindered us. Satan can hinder men. 
I like you to shout it from the depth of your heart. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I take authority, I take authority over every hindrance. Over every hindrance. Stopping good things. Stopping good things. From coming into my life. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Every hindrance. Man, systems, demonic forces. Every hindrance. I come against you. I come against you. I come against you. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hear me. If you are in ministry or you are in any form of leadership, as we pray this prayer, let it be from your heart. Every chain. Every chain. Shout it again. Say every chain. Every chain. Tying down my advancement. Tying down my advancement. Tying down my progress. Tying down my progress. By the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Break now. Break now. Break now. Go ahead and pray. Every chain. In the name of Jesus. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say every legal access. Every legal access. That the devil has over my life. That the devil has over my life. Over the works of my hands. Over the works of my hands. And over all connected to me. And over all connected to me. By the blood of the Lamb. Access is broken now. Go ahead and pray. Every legal access. Every legal access. Even the lawful captive shall be delivered. Hallelujah. Now, please listen carefully. Listen carefully. Just help those under the anointing. When I was preparing the prayer requests, this prayer request, I had a vision. And in the vision, I saw a woman sitting down. And I just saw tears coming out of her eyes. And that was when this scripture came. Psalm 116 verse 8. Psalm 116 and verse 8. Psalm 116 for thou has delivered my soul from death my eyes from tears and my feet from falling someone say in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I, decree I decree and declare that the spirits that the spirit and the forces, and the forces responsible, for my tears, responsible for my tears I declare judgment upon you I declare judgment now 
open your mouth and pray In the name of Jesus. 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 Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The mantle for my destiny. The mantle for my destiny. The mantle for my assignment. Rest upon me now. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. The grace assigned. The mantle assigned for your destiny. Let it rest upon you. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, two more prayer points. Fire is burning in this place. Mm. You are going to pray. Everything that left my life. Everything that left my life. By demonic orchestrations. By demonic orchestrations. I decree and declare. I decree and declare. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Return back to my destiny. Open your mouth and prophesy. Restoration. 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 Everything, everything, everything. Restore, restore, restore years, restore things, restore years, restore things. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. The final prayer point, I want you to pray it with all of your heart. 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 26. 15, 26. And the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Last week, you cannot imagine how many people I got, without exaggeration, probably thousands of text messages saying, Apostle, thank you so much. That message, I shall not die. It just destroyed. You cannot imagine how many people live perpetually in the fear of death. Fear of death. He says, and to deliver them who through the fear of death have all their lifetime been subject to bondage. Say in the name of Jesus. Shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. I declare that I have no covenant with death. I have no covenant with the grave. Therefore, every altar that wants to administer death. May the Lord judge you right now. Open your mouth and pray. I have no covenant with death. No covenant with 
death. No covenant with death. No covenant with the grave. Someone pray. No covenant with death. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, many of you will be surprised as you see answers to this prayer begin to come into your life. There is a God that answers prayers. He says there shall be no more infant of days. You see, when you see things going wrong in your life, you have a responsibility to identify it based on the will of God, not based on emotions. The basis for everything we do. Listen, I have taught you that the, the administration of the power of God is within the jurisdiction of the will of God. The power of God does not act outside of the will of God. Are we together? The ability, the assignment, the mandate upon the power of God is to restore all things to be consistent with the will of God. Hallelujah. So when the power of God comes upon a person, it works only with respect to the will of God. This is the confidence upon which we can release God's word and expect it to work. Because when the word of God, listen, the word of God works like a drug. When a doctor gives you a pill or a set of pill to swallow, you don't have to tell the pill where to go to. Already designed, are we together now? It knows where to go and find the entire pharmacology of the drug. It was designed to identify there is a way it works in your body. For some of you, the moment you swallow the drug, it will demand that you are asleep for it to really work. So it will just hibernate your body and force you to sleep. And then you wake up with a sigh of relief. Hallelujah. When the power of God comes into your life, it does not know you as a person. It only knows the will of God or what is not the will of God. And the assignment of the power of God is to start scanning your life. No, this, this growth here is inconsistent with the will of God. That becomes the ministry right there. Hallelujah. So don't just fall down and stand up for nothing. Don't just shout and scream for nothing. No, understand what the power of God is doing in your life. When we are praying for the sick, we may not mention your case, you see, because even within the prophetic, we are limited. And whether your case is mentioned or not, yours is to receive. Let the power of God go into your body. The power of God has no business going to your kidneys when the problem is in your head. If a drug that was designed by man has that level of intelligence and precision, how much more the word of God that is quick and powerful. The Bible says it is sharper than every two-edged sword. It is able to divide even to asunder between the soul and the spirit and that it can even discern the intent of the heart of man. Hallelujah. When the anointing of the Spirit comes upon you, you must believe that you received something. And then you must take the relevant actions. Once I pray for the sick, and we, we, it is time to take testimonies for those in all the overflow so that we do it in an orderly manner as we always do. If they are coming for the testimony, allow them to come, those outside. There are several people outside so that there's no chaos. Make sure that there's an orderly way to usher them in. And then for those who are online, you can always send in your testimonies and we'll be able to take a few. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus did not ignore the presence of demons. 
Jesus did not ignore the reality of the ministry of demons. In fact, in his teaching, very clearly he would, he would let them know that from the beginning it was not so. That Satan had played a role in the conditions of those people. But the most important thing is that every time Jesus works miracles, it is for the revelation of his glory. That means one of the ways that he reveals his glory is by working miracles. John chapter 2 and verse 11. This beginning of miracles, the Bible says, did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory. How did he manifest his glory? By beginning to do miracles. The Bible says, and the disciples believed in him. Hallelujah. In John chapter 20, from verse 30 and 31, give it to us please. John 20, and many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, 31. It says, but these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that in believing you might receive life through his name. So there are no limits to what he's able to do. Hallelujah. Several people have come right now with oppressions of darkness and there is no reason. You can't have, some of you have come here from as early as 8, 9 in the morning. Can you imagine to wait that long only to experience the power of God? Would it be just and fair that you return back the way you came and then the only thing you say is well i came for a miracle service what then is the miracle about the service hallelujah so as i minister by the spirit i want you to focus not just on people falling and standing up focus on what the power of god is doing and then especially in your own life too believe that god is doing something in your life when God gives a prophetic word, say for instance, even if your name is not called and it applies to you right where you are, what he says to one, he says to all, you can connect by faith. Is a father and the Lord who has transited in glory, Archbishop Benson in Dahosa, who says, if your faith says yes, God will not say no. He says, if ye been evil, know how to give good gifts. How much more will your heavenly father Hallelujah. Several people are here under the influence of strange, unclean, the Bible calls them wicked spirits that masquerade behind the negative conditions of men. I hope you know that most negative conditions in the lives of people are sponsored and influenced by the presence of demon spirits. And fighting physical things is only a total waste of time. It is authority in the name of Jesus that is able to deal with these demonic forces. And that separation is what the Bible calls deliverance. The greatest of them being your salvation itself. Because salvation is the chiefest expression of deliverance. Being translated, the Bible says, from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. But that does not neglect nor downplay other dimensions of deliverance. Like that which happens upon Mount Zion. Because the Bible says, but upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and holiness. Then the sons of Jacob shall possess their possession. Are you ready tonight? As for me, for as long as I live, the devil will not rest. For as long as I live, there will not be one person who comes under this, this prophetic atmosphere. Oppressed by the devil. Acts 10.38 how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. He went about doing good and healing not all they that were sick. That means most sicknesses are issues of deliverance. Healing all, that they, all they that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
so please when people are falling under the anointing close to you we have a lot of ushers hundreds of them but they are limited and we need to stretch and work with time if someone is under the anointing close to you whether you are an usher or not if there is a call to bring them out please do well to bring them out let's work together so that god grants us grace in the name of jesus one last prayer father i'm ready locate me and visit me go ahead and pray locate me visit me locate me visit me in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ when we minister deliverance it's not just an issue of anointing and power there is a dimension of kingdom authority you see authority is higher than power it is authority that gives power its legitimate ground to be administered are we together the person who has power and the person who has authority one with authority is greater because you can use power illegitimately authority is what gives power its credence for instance if you carry a gun and you shoot someone, you can be in jail for the rest of your life because you have power, but you do not have authority. Is that true? Yeah. When you get to the court of law, they are not going to ask you if you have a gun. They will say, based on what? What gave you that authorization? But no judge will call a military man and say, why did you shoot these people when you are in war? They got the command to fire from their commanding officer and they acted so. Are we together now? He said, we have been commanded to bless. So I'm about to pray. And I'm going to ask you to start bringing those under the anointing. It's interesting how God does this thing. Believe me. You would think that after walking in the, with the power of God for so many years, you should get used to the dynamism of the workings of God's power. I still, I still am amazed and how the power of God rests upon people and the, the, the entire administration of the power of God is still a, a, maybe not a surprise in all fairness, but it still keeps me in awe. I'm, I'm just saying, my God, I fear you every time I see him do this thing. Now, you can imagine a, a, a church is silent, peaceful, matured, able-bodied looking people and in seconds, just like that, deliverance, and all kinds of things begin to happen to people. What a marvelous God we serve. Hallelujah. So I'm going to pray. God has given me the marching orders by his spirit. Ordinary men helped by God. Hallelujah. The power of God is going to begin to fall on people now. Don't shout. Don't say anything. I just want you to bring them out. I'm seeing the ground open. And I'm seeing something look like smoke coming out of that ground. And this is connection with ancestry and the spirits of the dead. And there are people within this auditorium and outside. There are all kinds of demonic fraternities. And right now, by the spirit of God, the power of God is beginning to rest on such families and altars. Please bring them out. Bring them out right now. It's not something you can stand. This is, this is by the spirit of the living God. Please prick them out and bring them out very quickly. Jesus is alive and the power of the grave is broken, broken forever. I decree and declare right now that everything young and old, there are some of you who are standing representing families, fraternities with the grave, the spirits of the dead. It says, oh death, where is your sting? And oh grave, where is your victory? May that grace come upon you now, bringing liberty, bringing liberty, bringing liberty by the Spirit of God. In the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the living God. Marvelous God. Now God is showing me something. I'm seeing something that looks like a shadow coming out of people, like physically, shadow. These are spirits that have been moving in the bodies of people. In the name of Jesus, 
every familiar spirit every spirit that is not of God that has connected itself to your spirit manipulating your life and your destiny I declare that it leaves you right now I bring you deliverance right now by the power of the Holy Spirit 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 hallelujah now we're going to shout that name Jesus please hear me this is not just for individuals now there are many many families the Lord is showing me I'm seeing a man standing a very tall man and I'm seeing chains on your feet both of your feet they are under chains and the Lord is telling me that that man represents families it's not just an individual we're about to shout that name Jesus the moment that happens the power of God will come on individuals representing their various families no matter where they are some of them may not be here on ground but the power of God is coming upon them are you ready to shout that name Jesus one two three shout Jesus I break those chains I break those chains now I break those chains now I release families under demon under demonic captivities chains be broken 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 hallelujah hallelujah the Lord is showing me a family here in fact for that person I don't know if it's that you have changed the surname or you want to change the surname because someone told you something about the surname and said there is something connected to ancestry that comes with that name who is that person I'm about to pray for that person I'm seeing a lady you are wearing red complete red down this is you are one of such persons that the Lord wants to visit with that name I'm giving it please let's respect the I give the chains falling I give the chains falling let me tell you the truth now I'm not I'm not advising you to go and change names I am just telling you that in the realm of the spirit a name is more than a means of identification are we together now to the an extent that God would call Abraham Abraham Sarai Sarah Cephas Peter I want to pray right now I'm going to stretch my hands towards you the power of God is going to come you don't have to change the name physically but from the realm of the spirit any connection with any name in the name of Jesus those in front I stretch my hands right now every altar that powers any name to work evil over you in the name of Jesus I declare right now at the count of three let it be broken one two three break break now 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 every name connected to ancestry I'm saying it again names that came as a result of dedications done to idols names that came as a result of covenants with the dead by the power that raised Christ from the dead from the realm of the spirit I break the power of those names now I break the power of those names now I break the power of those names now I'm telling you I'm just see fire rising in front that's what I'm saying I say it again I break the power of those names now the power of the help that woman the power of those names now please hear me I'm praying for everybody but then for those in front here any exchange that has happened in the realm of the spirit 
an exchange of your destiny on account of Bakatos Keteketa, an exchange of Abare Ketos Kiata. Oh, I'm, I'm seeing exchanges happening. Let there be a restoration now, a restoration now by fire, a restoration now. A restoration now. A restoration now. Release your destinies. Release your destinies. Every altar. Release your destinies now. Please hear me. Some of you, while I'm praying for you here, your loved ones who are not here, but because they are connected by bloodline, what God is doing, I'm saying it again, is that Anjabes was more honorable than his brethren. The mother called him Jabez, sorrow. Every name, spiritually and physically, that is upon your life right now, and is responsible for your destruction. I come by the rod of a higher priesthood. Let that name change now. The power behind that name, I break it now. I break it now. I break it now. Hallelujah. I'm about to pray a very serious prayer right now. For those who can, you can return to your seat. Um, I'm seeing the map of Nigeria. Listen carefully now. And the Spirit of the Lord is taking me to Benue State. And I'm hearing the name Aleku in the name of Jesus Christ. Any family that is connected to that spirit of divination, right now the power of god is going to come on some people that spirit alex be broken be broken be broken the spirits of the dead help them please benway state or anyone connected to that state in the name of jesus christ be broken now be broken now Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing. Keep